Alright everyone, welcome back. This is episode number 6 of Learning Motion Control with Beckoff PLCs. I'm going to go ahead and scan these devices in here. Uh, so to do that, we'll go back to config mode on our PLC, load our I.O. devices, and let's not activate free run. So I'll right click on this guy. I've gone, I've gone ahead and changed the topology a little bit from when we scanned it in last time. I've hooked up the uh, EtherCAT directly through the servo. I'll show you here in a second, actually. Let's go ahead and scan this and see what happens. Okay, so it says, hey, I found this drive, and it's ahead of all of this other stuff that used to be here. This is what I know about. This is what I've just found. So you can come over here, click, you know, I want this guy. I want him to be here, and I want him to be right before him. So it all goes green. That means, hey, what I saw is now what I have configured. Hit OK. and we should be good to go. So all I really should have to do is activate my configuration, run mode, log in. It says it's not ready. It lies sometimes. You just have to do it twice. Run. Okay, so now if I pop over to my EtherCAT drive, I can look here and I say, Ooh, error, pre-op, init error. So we gotta go find out what that is. Now might be a good time to mention the EtherCAT states. We have init, pre-op, safe op, op, and then these are just two commands here. So op is what you want, which is operational. And you can see some stuff here where we've got that many cyclic frames, 100 frames a second, and so on. So if you have something that says something like error, pre-op, init, we need to go find out what's going on with that device. Okay, so to inspect this drive, we'd come over to this uh, entry in the tree over here, open it up, and this is the drive manager. We've got channel A, channel B. Those two are identical, except that one is for the, one of the servos and the other is for the other one, right? So device here is going to be everything that's common to uh, the drive itself, the digital I.O., stuff like that. So let's find out what it's upset about right now, and you can find that quickly down here in this diagnostic code. So I'm going to mouse over it, and it says that U mains is too low, so the mains is the high voltage. So we'll check it over in power management, and let's see what it's got set up here. Other settings. So it's set up for 400 volt, which is not what we're running. So let's go ahead and fix that to 120 American AC. That's what we've got. And we'll go ahead and download it. And it says we got to activate to, to change power settings. Not all settings you have to activate for, but this is a pretty big one, so... Let's go ahead and do that. One other thing, if you are having trouble with these menus, I'm on a kind of a low resolution here, so you can click on this little guy and, and move around stuff. It's kind of kind of different than what I see elsewhere in Visual Studio, so there's something interesting to, to realize. It took me a while to find that little guy. Uh, so I think we're okay with this DC link okay. Uh, we currently don't have any NC links going, so let's go ahead and fix that next. A lot of times when you bring in the drive, it's going to go ahead and link it automatically, or it'll ask you, do you want to create an NC device? But it didn't do that this time, probably because I already had a bunch of stuff in the tree. So that's good, though. Let's go ahead and run through creating an NC drive, and uh, we'll, we'll link it manually. All right, so in TwinCat, we need to add an NC axis. NC stands for numerical control. And what it is is basically an abstraction layer for all the different motor types you could possibly imagine. So we'll come over to this motion tab, right click, add new item. And we've got CNC, which we're not messing with really at all in this series. I'll, I'll probably talk about it a tiny bit later. But we want an NC or a point to point NCI configuration. So we'll hit OK. This is just saying we want this system brought into our you know solution overall here. So. We've now got an NC task that's uh, mildly complicated, but you don't really need to mess with it at all. It kind of sets up by default pretty well, unless you get crazy with things. Uh, most of this runs on a two millisecond scan time, I believe. So two, actually four milliseconds. So two, or no, yeah, so two two cycle ticks and it's a base tick of one. So uh, that's two milliseconds total for the cycle axes. We'll just add an axis. And we'll just leave it called one. Continuous axis is what it is. It's not an encoder. It's not a time generator or any of these other wonky things that they do. So uh, continuous axis is what we want. And we're going to need to link it to some hardware. It doesn't know about what drives. It, it doesn't have any clue what we've got down on EtherCAT down here. So uh, let's go in and tell it that. 
All right, so I want to run the big drive that's right in the front here. So uh, I'll show you in a minute, but we need to link the I.O. And so on this, it looks like we have two separate servo drives. In reality, that's just the one with two channels. So we'll pick channel A. I don't actually know which one it's on, so I may switch that later and not tell you. Uh, units are millimeters. You can do degrees, things like that. So we'll leave it at millimeters. And that's really about all we have to do right off the bat. So let me save everything and we'll reactivate it and see if we can get communication going. All right, so it's mad about licenses because we just added an NC axis. So I'm going to go ahead and reactivate that NC axis. They do have uh, motion packs and things like that. So depending on what you need, point to point motion, interpolated motion, you're going to pay a little bit more uh, per axis uh, up to, I think the, you know, 10 of them is included in the pack. So for one to 10 at some price, any more than 10, you're going to go up. This particular PLC I have could easily run 20 or 30 axes or something like it's it's pretty crazy how many they can run so here on the online tab of axis one I can look at uh, quite a bit of information here but this is my position essentially this is my set position my actual position so one of the things you've got to do we have to reset it and that's just clears any faults it has from losing its high voltage power or anything like that. So I, I, I didn't mention it, but these will have a 24 volt system and a high voltage system. And one of the safety, uh, common uh, safety categories, you'll just pull the high voltage off of it just completely with a big contactor. So it keeps 24 volts, so it keeps all its communication going. So when that comes and goes, you've got to reset this drive and stuff like that. So the other thing you need to do is enabling. Uh, feed forward, feed backwards, and controller enable. You need to have these set. So these are like limit switches and uh, the actual controller enable. Normally you would set that from the PLC, but this is a good place to uh, to get those set. So here we've got an error. We can reset that. Um, I don't remember what that one is, but it's a common one. So now we can enable. Oh, we got it back. Let's see what it is. Okay, so let's pop back over to the drive, see what it's mad about. Axis error A, diag code, come on. Uh, no motor configured. Okay, so we need to come in to channel A, configuration, motor. I thought these were set up a little bit more than this, but I haven't actually uh, talked to them much. So I thought there was a way in here to scan all of this. Reset all motor and feedbacks. Feedback on connector. Uh, we've got one cable and scan it. Alright, we found a hyperface encoder. Power supply. So it's going to automatically set the scaling in the parameters, so that's good. We want that. Set NC parameters. Please activate. Getting used to that. Ooh, DC link is okay now because the motors are happy. Let's go ahead and activate that and see if that gets us further. Okay, so we're activated. I'm going to pop back to my axis. And, oops, open my axes. Pop back to my axis. Okay, we've got a much more reasonable looking position here. And we have some actual velocity change. So... I'm going to reset this guy and enable him. Oops, I forgot to enable all these. Check them all. Reset if I need to. And I get a ding. What does a ding mean? Okay, that was the first one. Velocity set point is outside the permissible range. <sighs> All right, guys, from the magic of editing, uh, I went and figured out what was wrong, but, well, not entirely. My Beckoff guy warned me that this drive uh, or drive motor combo on one of the channels might have a problem, and I think I found it. So let's not get hung up on that little problem. And uh, I went ahead and added in Axis 2 here, disabled Axis 1, and I linked it to Channel B. So now Channel B, which also has a motor on it, I scanned the motor and everything, brought it in here, linked it up right there to the I.O. 
and I'm getting good data again here. And uh, so if I just activate this with enable, it should be good to go, and now I can jog the motor. There's also some additional functions here, where if you wanted to do some absolute moves and things like that, or just set it to a raw percentage, uh, you can do some kind of neat stuff and uh, just for testing. So this is just to kind of get the thing up and running, to test it, to check your scaling and such, which we didn't talk about yet. Uh, but there's just a ton of settings in here, uh, in these parameters rather, that, you know, limits and stoppages and monitoring and just all kinds of stuff that you can set up in addition to uh, what would be in the drive. So this is all at the NC level, uh, whereas the other settings we were in for the drive were at the drive level. So you can you can close the servo loop here on the NC side, you can close it on the drive side, uh, you can do all kinds of different stuff. So we're gonna kinda just go about getting the system working with changing as little as possible for now, but otherwise uh, this is a, a functional system here. So we'll move over to the PLC here shortly.